Okay, just so I don't waste the whole day playing around with Mathematica, um, avoiding doing the yard work, I'm going to take people through very quickly here, a real quick mashing up or amalgamation of both the, uh, showing you the web console and how you use Ruby to program inside of sketchy physics. So. Right away, if you remember the web console, web console, web console, Ruby code generator, that's one of them there. Web console here. These two, web console and Ruby code generator, just coming from uh, Martin Reinhardt, and I think this one, web console, from a guy named Jim Foltz out on the Ruby world. If you look at here, it just kind of gets you started on some real basic code. And so right away you can do things immediately. You start to say, you start to know that you can do different things like saying entity zero equals entities zero if there in fact is a zero. In other words, you're setting one thing equal to the other. Now, probably you're going to miss a statement here, but when you do an evaluation here, you see nothing. So very often you want to have, for debugging, you want to have up the Ruby console over here. And you're going to go ahead and then hit evaluation here. And then you saw that there's nothing in there. Where, in fact, if you um, would more, more or less draft a line in here, a couple lines here, and then I said evaluate there, you see that it did find an edge. So just in that, you realize that all of a sudden you have kind of done some programming. Um, you're going to see one of the key things in programming is keeping track of variables. And um, as you're looking at a learning first, maybe on a TI calculator, but quickly jumping into Ruby or Python, um, how you preface things in a program will tell you sometimes what kind of variable it is. So in, with that, with that in mind, we're going to go right away here to, to kind of the, the scripting, the programming that's allowed in Sketchy Physics 3.x, April 27th, Sketchy, Sketchy Physics. If you're going to get Google, if you get SketchUp on your machine, get Sketchy Physics on your machine. Why? It's not quite perfect physics, but it's fun physics. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I am going to all of a sudden I put on that I'm going to turn on the physics and it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't go anywhere because up oh, there it did go someplace so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on again hit here and then backwards this time hit that and somehow that control panel is coming up in the wrong spot I really don't want it there I'm going to go back again turn it on here there goes the physics it goes down all right why do that well what we want to point out here is this ability of then using the user interface here, use it, use your interface button, UI for short, to add something scripted. And so scripted is going to be, it's going to occur when you turn on the uh, the animation. So when you click this right here, it's going to run the scripted code. So for instance here. Your scripted code might be dollar sign, which is what signals a global variable, strength equals 1000.0. And that would mean over here in this variable, this is going to turn that on from the get go. So you could go ahead and put the strength here and put the strength equal to dollar strength. Now that's just the most simple bit of code, but what this is going to do later on is going to val let you go ahead and change the strength, and this is a magnetic strength based on every time it touches something else or every time a, a frame in the animation changes. In other words, this is going to calculate so many times a second. So you click on all those things, and now we've basically done a program that's going to turn on the magnetic or the gravity ability of something here. I'm going to hit hopefully this works. I'm going to hit here. I've got that clicked on. That of course is not going to make a whole lot of sense unless we put something near it. And that object we're just going to go ahead and go right click and change. I'm sorry we're going to go to user interface here and you'll notice right in this when I click on these things very often you'll get here 
sometimes nothing comes up you need to save at that point get out and come back into the program so right now I've turned on that thing on the right is being magnetic and now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit zoom around here and just in that I'm gonna say turn it on and you notice what happened there now again here's the imperfect physics not only did it attract to it it kept going in that direction because man eh, it just is not perfect physics so in that once again turning it on you have one basic program well you can come back here and come back to here and still turn all of a sudden turn the strength to be minus 1000 and that going to mean it's going to repel I'm going to hit clex here and now when I do that up oh, didn't work so it didn't take the value we'll try it again it didn't take the value and so you have to always check that the program does what you think it was trying to do I'm gonna hit the user interface here and very often that's the case here where you see when you get to that in this program it means that something didn't take so what you've got to do is you're gonna file save as right away I'll just call this June 4 a and hit save that I'm gonna to have to actually file exit all the way out of SketchUp and then go back into SketchUp and we're gonna go ahead and change that variable now you're gonna see that's the on tick and on the touch that's gonna allow you to kind of play around with programming before you go deeper into it for animations or any other thing quantity takeoff and the like so once again file and open that up and if you remember how we go it we go ahead we click on something with the select tool we go to the user interface and remember what we try to do is change that to be a minus 1000 now somehow when we did that it didn't take but now when we turn this on you see how it pushes that thing away now what's interesting it pushes one thing away and not the other well you can go ahead and do a couple of things here we can go ahead and also make this one magnetic and it's true not true magnetism we can take that one and once again go to scripted and we can call this we don't even need to go to scripted here we can just give this one it has a value of strength and the dollar sign is what's gonna s t r e n g t h in other words this variable is not just attached to this single thing it's gonna get what's called a global variable called strength so when I click on that here my assumption both of these things are magnetic and they're both pushing away therefore they're not quite working yet we're gonna grab this one Go ahead and make a double check that we did change it to magnetic. It has a strength, dollar strength equals minus one thousand dollar strength there. This one here, dollar strength, and it is also magnetic. And why it's not? Well, we'll go ahead and see if we can change that here. Make that to be dollar strength. equals minus 1000.00 they're both ah the magnet was not on so I don't even need to do that you have to have something clicked and the strength there so that was my mistake this is called debugging debugging so you kinda have to experiment with what you expect is gonna happen there's a lot of this in engineering so this is a nice place to kinda there you go it's working in both directions and so the fact that you can go through and very quickly learn Ruby, right? And what we can do is we can actually go into here now and finally just show you where it would start to look a little bit different. You could go into here and then on tick, you could write something that looks something like this, dollar strength equals frame. And what that would do is on every tick, it's going to change the strength to be equal to frame. So we're going to go ahead and it's, hopefully that works. And now when we turn it on, as they start to fall, you notice there at the beginning there, there is no attraction, but then there is. And finally, with a couple seconds left, we can go back to here. User interface, that was there. We can say it's equal to minus times the frame. And the frame is counts frame from beginning of the time of the of the simulation. Click here. 
and turn that on and you notice it's going to start to push away. So in that, in sketchy physics is probably the easiest route to start to play around with variables and Ruby for animation. From there you head off to the, these web consoles and you can really start doing a whole lot of fun stuff at the same time you're also practicing your drafting. Thanks for listening. We'll do something with these models uh, in the next video. Thanks for listening.